Okay, so we've talked a good bit about the relationship between the sample size and the margin of error, right? So as your sample size um, gets larger, your standard error gets smaller, and that brings your margin of error down. So a lot of times you want to think about that before you start the study. So you may have an idea of what you want your margin of error to be, what you want your confidence level to be, and then that's going to determine how large of a sample size you need. Um, so first of all, let's start off by just thinking about what the formula for the margin of error is, right? The margin of error is whatever our critical value is, z star, times this formula for the standard error, right? P times Q divided by N. So if you rearrange that a little bit, you can figure out what the sample size needs to be in terms of z star and the margin of error P and Q. So if you want to do this with the algebra, you can, um, but this will also be on the reference sheet, so you don't have to be able to rearrange it quickly. So one little problem, um, you notice that it has P and Q um, in the formula, but obviously we're doing this before the study happens, so we don't know what P and Q are. We don't even know what P hat and Q hat are at this point. So there's sort of two options. If there was a previous study, like a pilot study, that suggests a certain value of P, go ahead and use whatever the pilot study says. Um, but if there was no previous value of P available, then you're gonna use um, 0.5. So the reason that we use P equals 0.5 is that actually leads to the largest possible standard error. So that's sort of the worst case scenario, the largest possible standard error. So what that means is that no matter what your p hat turns out to be, your sample is large enough even in the worst case. Sample is large enough even in the worst case for your p hat and your q hat. Okay, so let's just see how to plug into this formula. So the one we're using, z star over the margin of error, all of that squared P times Q, and that's gonna tell us what sample size we need. Okay, so how do we decide what our Z star should be? So remember, the way you decide what your Z star is is by looking at your confidence level. And we've seen on the um, previous page, page three, I think, um, how to figure out the Z star for 99% confidence. It comes out to be 2.5758. So that's our Z star. For margin of error, we just see what margin of error we wanted. We want it within four percentage points. And since this is written in terms of proportions, the formula is in terms of proportions, we'll do 0 0.04 here. Okay, so that's the margin of error, 0 0.04 take that and square it. We don't know yet what our um, P and Q are going to be, so we're just going to use 0.5. Okay, so when you multiply that out, you get 1036.7. Um, so you don't want a decimal because your sample size can't be a decimal. And actually, no matter what the decimal turns out to be, in these cases, we always round up because we want to make sure that we're sort of playing it safe. So if we round up, that means that we need a sample size of 1,037 to get the margin of error and the confidence level that we want. Okay, so the next question set um, has you work through the example. It's the example we've looked at several times, um, the cosmic delivery example. You'll also notice there's some questions down here, um, so make sure that after you uh, work through those questions that you come back and fill in your notes.